Hello, hello, hello. Welcome all of my beautiful friends from the internet again for another week's episode of the Reddit Asks Us podcast. I'm so happy and uh, thankful. Uh, Thanksgiving, well, C- Canadian Thanksgiving, I guess. Yeah, the Americans have Thanksgiving on another time, but Canadian Thanksgiving, um, which yeah, we've had this debate on the podcast before, but well, I'll get into it after I'm done the intro. But anyways, um, so I'm so thankful to be back uh, here with you again on this wonderful Tuesday or whenever you happen to be listening to this episode, whether that be morning, evening, or night. Uh, welcome to the Reddit Ask Us podcast, the podcast where we read and react to the comments from r slash ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Remember, uh, if you like the show, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. And also... Leave us a rating, and also please, please, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you else to get your podcast. You guys have no idea how much it helps when we have those. So thank you all so much uh, for for leaving reviews, leaving comments, um, leaving ratings. It is just it it has it helps the show out just uh, to a to a really 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 help you know just great extent. I I'm I'm very thankful for that. So also last thing here. Remember, you can answer this week's Reddit question by listening in Spotify. With uh, you don't need a membership um, or to subscribe, and you can listen in Spotify. And you can answer this week's Reddit question by going to the description of the episode and below the description, um, and clicking on the description uh, below it, you should see a white icon that says "Reply." This feature is just amazing. Again, I just love the engagement that we get through this feature. I th- shout out to Spotify for this. It's just so awesome to see what everyone has to say. Um, and you will be notified when your response is published. Also, if, if there's a character limit, so if you go over the character limit, um, you can always go and just comment on my YouTube channel. Um, same Reddit asks us on YouTube. You can always do that if, in case you have a longer story. But um, yeah, just to quickly touch on this debate, we have this debate on the podcast almost every single year about the Thanksgivings, right? And the Canadian and American Thanksgivings. Don't necessarily know why there's a difference in between them two, but to me, the American Thanksgiving just doesn't make sense. And hear me out. Hear me out, Americans. I know you guys are up in arms right now, probably shooting your pistols in the air. Um, Look at me, just totally American stereotyping all of my audience. Isn't that just great? Um, No, I love love each and every single one of you. um, But anyways, hear me out. Hear me out. This is why the Thanksgiving doesn't make sense. Canadian Thanksgiving, all right, you you have enough breaks, okay, in between different holidays. Right, because after Easter you have the summer. Okay, the summer is is holidays. All right, not 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 that because I get it, everyone works, but th- at least for the most part, in most of the places in the world, the weather's nice, so you can kind of count on that, right? And then there's like August, there's August long weekends, this couple, and then there's like July first or and you know and or July fourth for my uh, my U.S. friend citizens, um, you know, and then and then you come around to September, fall starts, then October. Is, is perfect for Thanksgiving because it allows you to meet your meet with your family. You know, it's just when the fall is kind of beginning. It's not super cold yet, nothing like that. Um, you know, you get to have a, sit down, have a nice meal, catch up with everyone about the summer, you know, how things are going. And then you have another month and a half before you have to see them again, potentially, for Christmas. The American Thanksgiving is in November. So you literally go from eating a whole big dinner and then you do it again like less than a month later. It doesn't make sense. There's not enough space. You need more space. All right. It's just, it's too much pressure. Okay. We need, we need, I don't want to, you know, we don't, we, we, we all love our families, but we need, we need some, we all need our time alone. Okay. It's important that we, that we, uh, we, we, we take healthy breaks from our family because we all have some crazy hectic families. Don't worry. Don't get me wrong. I love my family. I love everyone in my family. I enjoy, very much enjoy spending time with people in my family, but you know, it's family is a, it's a big commitment and it's hard, especially for the people who make the dinner. You know what I mean? It's a lot to go through to, to make a Thanksgiving dinner and then to do it again, like less than a month later is just ridiculous. Okay. We need to ease up a little bit. All right. I, I'm speaking more for the perspective of the hosts of the people who host Thanksgiving dinner. Like, man, I wouldn't want to host Thanksgiving dinner and then do it all again at Christmas. But anyways, rant over. Um, so why don't we hop into last week's replies? There wasn't many because I don't blame y'all. 
because uh, it's a pretty specific question. But last week's was, uh, what was the most absurd reason that someone canceled their wedding? And yeah, we only got one reply on this one. This is from Stressed Human. My friend's friend canceled her wedding because their horoscope advised them not to make any drastic changes to her life that day. Well, you know... It's the, when Gatorade is in, you know, when Mercury's in Gatorade, what else can you do, right? That's, it, it's literally in Gatorade. So, yeah, we, we have to follow what the star signs are telling us, okay? It's, 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 it's really imperative that we do this because if we don't, then I really don't know what the consequences are. I really don't know. You see, like, with all the, with all of the belief systems, it seems like there's something on the line what's on the line with the horoscope stuff what what's what's what am i risking if i don't follow the 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 you know the horoscope or follow what's what's going on in my sign or whatever it doesn't really seem like a lot like there's no punishment really like with 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 christianity like you're going to hell you know that's a pretty big if you're not following and listening to what's going on in the bible that's that's a that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty big consequence for not listening to what's going on. For horoscopes, it's like you just live your life normally, I guess. It doesn't really seem like there's maybe that's a good thing because uh, you know it's maybe probably not the best to be motivated to be religious out of complete and utter fear. <laughs> you know. Um, anyways, why don't we hop into this week's episode? And also, I'm just going to preface this. This episode is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm sure you're going to notice. It is a, it's another one of those really busy times for me with school. And I wasn't able to record an episode before today because today is Monday and this comes out tomorrow. So I wasn't able to, you know, record a f- uh, full episode. Um, you know, I'm obviously, I'm never going to give you all less, less than 30 minutes. It's not going to happen, but... Um, it's just a busy time with school and I, I, you know, y'all deserve your content. Don't get me wrong because y'all, y'all busy lives as well. And I'm sure you, you, you need the, the distraction, but, uh, and don't, don't get me wrong. So do I, but, um, but yeah, just wanted to preface that. Anyways, why don't we hop right in fried pig dicks? Really? Come on, man. Reddit is such a goofy place sometimes. Um, struggling without anyone or anything to fall back on. Uh, edit lots of comments from people that have never truly struggled in life before my god that's exactly what this whole thread is about the rest uh the rest of you make me feel a little bit better about my own situation stay strong homies um reply from kylan mama knowing that if one thing goes wrong i'm completely fucked that there's no safety net then watching prices climb and mentally running scenarios of what i'm going to do in any given situation all while acting like everything is okay so i don't pass adult problems onto my son how people have children in today's age and don't like actually go into a manic episode and like literally turn into the Joker from Batman. I seriously have no idea. Like I'm thinking like, like my cousin, uh, she's got kids and I was just over at her place for Thanksgiving and she was just like, Oh man, I've been tired for the last like 10 years. I'm like, if I was tired for the last 10 years, I would be in a straight jacket. <laughs> okay? Like I I would need to be I would need to be like institutionalized. All right? Like I can't function. Like I I'm, I'm this is so stupid. I feel so privileged. I like I like just I'll have a a very normal day at school and then I'll just like come home and like you know before I make dinner or before and then before I do my like later and like night, night studying I'll just like take a little nap. Like so I'm going to take a little nap. That's, that's just not going to happen if you have kids or, or like actual real life problems. Like, I, like I'm very thankful to be where I'm at. Like, trust me, don't get me wrong. I got like, you know, it's not that I, that I haven't had my struggles in life, but Jesus. Yeah. Like not, not having any backup plan, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of pressure, man. Like, I don't understand how people these days can, can get it done. Like it's, it's, it's really admirable to how people are keeping it together. Woo. I, uh, memes help. Memes help a lot. Reddit. Reddit helps a lot. So, you know, even when I'm feeling down and out, yeah, Reddit. Reddit's always there for me. Um, next one comes from Where the Money At, boy. Not having enough money due to unforeseen circumstances. Not every poor person is poor because of their own decisions. Finances are like traffic. You can do everything right on the road and have your life completely flipped by some other asshole driver. As, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. It, it, that, this is, and you know, this is what's really annoying about the Instagram, like, people who um, are, like, these grind set people. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're so it's so it's so un, not genuine because they're these are like these people who are like get off your ass, you know, get get working, you know, hustle your ass off. And it's like it's like I was born into poverty, okay? You know what I mean? Like I I I was, I, you know, like I I grew up in a foster home. Like this is, this is so it makes people feel so guilty. Is this the reason why our capitalist system is just incentivizes the worst behavior? out of people like it's so awful it's terrible it alienates people so hard like people are these privileged ass people who will get on social media and just start like you know just peppering out the like i don't this is, okay i'm gonna go over a little rant here folks telling people they need to get off their ass and like start grinding and 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 like hustling is not motivational okay motivation is like is building people up it is not it is not like telling people that they're shit <laughs> like that's this is very opposite like that's what that's what this motivational stuff has become it's literally become people went from it used to be those like those like i used to listen to like some of those like before i'd play a football game or a basketball game on my headphones i used to like listen to some of those like coaches speeches and motivational stuff and it used to be like it used to be like you know stuff like like um you know you you put the work in this is where you're at now like 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 uh, all all those days that you spent you know they mean something like you can do this like it's it's like there's no one in your mind that tell you you can't do this but you and it's like it's like it feels it's very sports motivational but it doesn't feel like you're a lazy fuck and you need to get you off your fucking ass it's like yeah that makes me feel really motivated that makes me feel like really great about my whole situation right now um let's see the ne reply from Dibla. I think people who have enough money are completely I ignorant to the fact that others don't have enough money. The yeah, very true. There was a thread recently about the temperature. People keep their house over the winter in. And a lot of people commenting that they keep the house warm because it's healthier and they don't feel the need to prove they're hard like people who keep it cold. Not an inkling of understanding that most people don't have the money to turn the heat on. Yeah, that's... That's very true. Um, I kind of like, I kind of like the 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 cold because you can always put on more layers, but it's hard to hard. To, you can only take so many off, you know. Um, all right, next one comes from Melks Jocolade eighty nine. Chronic debilitating illness and disability. Quickly, uh, how quickly life can change permanently without you doing anything wrong. Holy shit. Okay, you guys, I have a crazy story. This is fucking insane. Okay, this is my aunt just told me this story over Thanksgiving. This Strap in, folks, because this is wild. This is not a very long story, but this is just insane. So a, uh, a friend of my aunt... Um, I don't really want to necessarily like just talk about the connections. Just a friend of my aunt, they're just people that they know. So basically, anyways, this woman, she had to have a C-section in a hospital because you know there were complications at, at, at in her birth, and um, so during the C-section, she got um, I guess an infection of some sort. Like it was, but it was because of negligence from the hospital not doing the C-section properly. And or just uh, not uh, pr proper like antibiotics or or um, a, a sanitization or something something like something to do with that, and she ended up getting this infection in her body, and they had to cut off all of her limbs after she just gave birth to, birth to her child. And my aunt was telling me she's like, yeah, like she'll never hold her baby. She literally gave birth out of a C-section, and then she immediately went into surgery, and then she lost her limbs. She she never never will like hold her child. How fucked is that? But here's the even crazier part, is that they took a lawsuit out on the hospital for negligence, and the lawsuit was taking so long to process because the hospital was just banking. And I forget how this information was revealed, but I think it was in like deposition or something like this, like down the road, that it was revealed that the hospital was being very reluctant to like cooperate with a lot of the legal orders and stuff um, or just taking a lot of time. I don't actually know the intricacies of the whole situation, but 
or they were just filing paperwork on paperwork because they were hoping that she was going to die and the case was going to fizzle out. How fucking insane is that? It is like, what? Like, that means if you have a disability, there are literally, the system is literally preying on you dying. They are hoping you die so that they don't have to pay you money. That's fucking insane. Like, what? What kind of world do we live in? Like, this is just the, this is criminality at the highest fucking point. But chronic illness, yeah, like, I don't have any chronic, well, I don't really have any serious chronic illnesses. Like, I have asthma, but, like, uh, nah, it's not that bad. Like, it's really not that bad. I've, I've done a lot to, like, combat, combat it over the years because I've known I had it. So, you know, I spend a lot of time, you know, doing extra like exercising and stuff to you know keep it in check but uh but not at night yeah and like not not really like anything like um I don't know nothing like super chronic so I can't really relate on that on that front next one comes from laughing is awesome laughing is awesome that's why even when we do some of these serious episodes or maybe it's not necessarily serious but um serious in the sense that some of the comments are just, you know, pretty gnarly. Um, we, you know, it's important that we that we find humor in some things. You know, we don't want to ever like, really laugh at people, but, you know, we want to laugh with people and, and make fun of the people who deserve to be made fun of, if that makes sense. Um, laughing is awesome says nerve pain. Listen, I've never had, like, um, nerve pain in the sense of, like, sciatica. Cause like my, for example, like my, my, um, my grandpa has sciatica and it's like really painful for him. But one thing I did have though, and I was just telling uh, some people about this was I got like, I got sick last year. I got sick so many times, like so many times, like more than I normally do. Like, I, I don't really get, I'm like generally throughout my entire life. I've, it, it, I'm, I don't really, I can go a year or or two, like even two without getting sick. I've gone years without going, like without getting sick. I, I just, I think even high school, like literally my four years in high school, I, I, I seriously think I might've been sick maybe once or twice that I can, re- that I can remember. I'm just not somebody who like really gets sick a whole lot. But for some reason last year, I got just, just hammered man with the sickness. Like I got, I got COVID a bunch of times. I got colds. I just, and then I got, I got like a blood test and my white blood cell count was like super fucking low. And, and my, the doctor, my doctor was like super concerned. Don't worry. Everything's fine now. I don't have a low white blood cell count or anything. It was just really low at the time. And, uh, so I, I ended up getting shingles. And so for anyone who doesn't know what shingles is, and I don't know if I talked about it back then, uh, really, but basically there's the chicken pox and if you had the chicken pox which i have had the chicken pox it is it is like it's um <laughs> i was about to say something really bad it's like herpes no it's not like herpes it's it's like herpes in the in the fact that um it lives dormant in you forever right it's like a cold sore right that like her, a cold sores are a part of the herpes family of viruses um it, it is uh, once you get the chicken pox, that virus never leaves your body. It stays dormant. And so the doctors were saying that, and normally you don't get shingles until you're like 50 or 60, but because your immune system starts to wane by then. But um, since I had been sick so many times and my white blood cell was, count was so low, my doctor said that it was most likely that I, that shingles came out because my, I was getting sick so much and I just had such a low and back to back to back. So my white blood cell count was so small and, um, but shingles though. Okay. Shingles, chicken pox, itchy. Okay. You know, it's fine. Whatever happens when you're a kid shingles dog is fucked, man. I had like, it's like welts, like, like sores. Oh, it's so disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm subjecting you guys all to this, but like, and it comes kind of like around your, like it, it comes, it can come anywhere. But for me, it was all around my, just excuse me, my neck and my ear. And it's, it literally are these like little sores and welts that, that f- are, are frying your nerve endings off. Like it is 
excruciatingly painful. Like, like it's probably been some of the most pain, worst pain I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I'm not even joking. Like, it is genuinely painful as fuck. Like, it, it, it feels like my best explanation for it is it feels like the force of the stinging of a thousand wasps in one centralized location. And, oh my god. Like, so that's my experience with nerve pain. And nerve, like, yo you y'all do not want shingles bro like it sh shingles is, is weird it sounds like it's like arthritis or something but it's so not it's just it's just it's literally just a resurfacing of chicken pox but it's fucked it's so fucking painful holy shit so my prayers go out to you if you never have to experience that um all right next one comes from holly jazzy experiencing the death of someone you love very true reply from cupcake Uther. My wife died in my arms on May 13th, 2023 at 6.28 p.m. She was 33. I heard her last breath, saw her eyes empty, felt her go limp. I didn't dream at all the, four, the first four months after. No nightmares, no dreams. I had to call her family and friends to let them know that she had died that evening. From September of last year to May this year, she had lost 70 pounds. She looked like a skeleton, but not to my eyes. She was beautiful, and I told her every single day. She started... Agonal breathing at 1 a.m. Agonal? I don't know what that is. On 1 a.m. at Saturday the 13th, I administered morphine and at Ativan, Ativan every hour so she wouldn't suffer too much. I played all of her favorite movies, 50 Fritz Days, Deadpool, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, all really good movies, and reading her our wedding vows. Her last words were, I love you too. She died six hours later. When the funeral home employees came to pick her up that night, they asked me if I wanted to spend some time with her before they took her. I couldn't speak. I just shook my head no. There was, she wasn't there anymore. Her mortal cage had opened its door and she had flown away. Her eyes. I'll never forget her eyes after she had gone. Please, everyone, if something doesn't feel right and the doctor says nothing, get a second opinion. C's get degrees and Allie's primary care doctor absolutely murdered her through misdiagnosis jesus okay wait he included an image here i really I don't know if i should be looking at this oh it's just oh it's just an oh it's a picture of his wife that's nice oh okay um i guess yeah from cancer that's really tough but um man like it's so weird how how like this this Man, I'm getting kind of deep and introspective here, so I'm apologizing for if this is a little bit too much for some folks, but, and and you can skip ahead maybe if this is a little too much, but just to go on a little divergent rant, it's, life is such a weird fucking thing. Like, it's so weird. We come, like, it's so strange how we experience two of the, like, inborn to our experience in this universe, we will experience two things that are so completely different and couldn't be more opposite opposite life and death life is such a vivid conscious uh you know visceral tactile practical experience and death is just void of that and it's so weird to think that like that that's the way it is how can things how can this universe be so different how can it contain things that are so like one way one thing and then something that is so like completely just not like that at all. You know what I mean? Like like a black hole is a really great example of this. Like how can the universe be filled with so much substance? There's m things in between things that we don't even that we can't even perceive. Air is literally a thing. You know what I mean? It's it, like there's molecules, there's stuff. There's so much stuff in the universe. And then in places it's just void. It's just random void. We don't even know. And it's so different. It's so opposite. It's just really interesting how how this universe sort of contains these types of phenomenon, these types of weird like features of the universe. It's just it's really fascinating, you know. Death is a weird one because you know, it's like the idea is that you're supposed to become at peace with death, right? Is that death isn't something that we should fear. And it's like I like it's just weird to me that as human beings, we have to go into this experience knowing that we have to overcome the idea of of an as a central aspect of why we're here. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
it's it's just crazy to me that that's like that's uh part of our just like experience you know it's it's uh it's pretty wild um let's see if i can find um some okay this one name the epithet uh says car crashes yeah dude i've i haven't really been in a car crash but i've known a, quite a few people who've been in some pretty crazy car crashes and it's man cars are freaking dangerous bro cars are dangerous as hell like like i think what was it i heard some i heard some like story about distracted driving when i was in high school and now it's like like it, it's i i can't like i i have to like really like just every time i'm driving i'm starting like i'm saying even more now like now that i'm starting to like like i drove i drove like some my little cousins around not too long ago and they're they're kids and like i was thinking to myself like damn like i'm driving around like kids right now like i have to be really responsible when i'm driving like i can't i can't be like being neglect neglecting which is when you're like get your license like you don't even think about it you know you're just kind of just like fuck it you know like i've got my license i'm gonna drive around and you know do whatever i want to do and i got a car now and i'm gonna whip around and all this stuff and then you know you start to realize like well that's you know it's very very dangerous you know you, you really really you can't predict this it. it's like my mom always says like you you can you only can control what you do so even if you're a good driver it doesn't necessarily make up for other people who are bad drivers. So if you're also not driving like really well, then that makes it even more likely that bad drivers are going to interact with you in a bad and a negative way. Um, and yeah, I saw, we, I was looking at these clips on Instagram now that somebody, I'm reading the replies to this, this comment. Um, and I was looking at this thing, this, it was a crash test dummy and it was a car crashing into a wall at like, like, you know, it would, it would go, you know, 20 kilometers an hour, uh, 50 kilometers an hour. And I'm like, and 50 kilometers an hour into a freaking brick wall is a lot of force. Like 50 kilometers an hour doesn't, does not feel like a lot. Like it does not feel like a lot. Like I'm trying to think of what that would be for you Americans, like 20 miles an hour, something like that. Um, like it does not feel very fast. It's like a city that's like a city maximum speed, right? You're driving down a city street, 50 kilometers an hour is generally the accepted speed at speed limit. Um, most places, it doesn't feel fast, but when, when that goes just right into a brick wall and the car, you see the, how fast and how, how easily the car crumples and like what happens to the crash test dummy. I was like, God damn, I need to start driving way slower than I'm driving right now. Um, Two peas in a pair replies and says, I was literally in a minor crash, 20 miles an hour. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's 50, 50, about 50 kilometers an hour. I was going, uh, when someone crashed into the side of me, I now hesitate driving between junctions where a car is waiting to exit. I freak out thinking they'll get me. It's honestly fucking horrible. Uh, another reply from OK Grapefruit 1284. I was rear ended twice in two years. Both times I stopped with my left turn signal on waiting for oncoming traffic to pass. The first one was relatively minor. Her car. Oops. Um, the first one was relatively minor. Her car was totaled, but we were both fine. Second time, the person who hit me was injured badly, but okay. I didn't even notice. I was hit. I felt the car vibrate, thought, oh, someone just hit me, pulled over, and did not realize my car had been pushed like 25 feet. Holy fuck. I don't even remember the actual impact at all. I also did not even realize it was considered a serious accident until the police and the doctor at the urgent care and the insurance agent who totaled my uh, my car kept all calling it that. I swear I have PTSD issues from those accidents. Uh, I have I hate left turns and I dislike being in the passenger seat. And I can just imagine getting hit with some catastrophic accident now when I drive. When I drive, uh, when I was driving shortly after the second accident, my Apple Watch kept dinging at me to breathe. <laughs> Holy fuck! That yeah, geez, man, I really hope that I don't experience anything like that jeez i gotta be i'm driving more carefully now okay i've seen too many things about cars man cars 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 i'm not a yeah not 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 nothing i said this oh this one's interesting um i'm surprised this one took this long to be on this to be upvoted this is crazy i'm uploading this right now because this should be higher but um what's something that people don't understand so they've been through it themselves the Gremshire says, homelessness. Nothing prepares you for it. 
No amount of knowledge about resources, street smarts, etc. prepares you for the devastation that is homelessness when you're not mentally ill or high to the hills. You quickly learn all the resources we like to lie to each other about and pretend those lazy bums have our crock of our crock of shit. Shelters are dangerous, filthy, abhorrent places, understaffed and simply don't have the funding to do much good. You can get food assistance, but food assistance, but that's about it. Everything is a waiting game. Rapid rehousing in most of the country isn't rapid. You'll be wait, you'll be on a waiting list forever. And when politicians want to save a few bucks or show how fiscally conservative they are, guess who's funding? Uh, uh, guess whose funding gets the first cut? Never mind the uh, the trauma of never having privacy, a bathroom, a place to sleep safely, a place to keep any belongings without them being stolen, the constant threat of being robbed in your sleep or assaulted if you're female, or maybe uh, some teens like you pelting you with eggs, etc. Yeah, that's tough. Teens like, teens like, oh, teens like pelting you with eggs. Teens like you. I didn't mean to say that. I was not part of the thing. Teens like you. Teens like you little teeners on Reddit throwing eggs at homeless people. Yeah, you little freaking weirdos. Stop throwing eggs at homeless people. Um, this is an interesting one because where I'm from here in Halifax or where I live, the home the unhoused issue is is very, very prominent. You know what I mean? It's it's um it's because so the province of Nova Scotia is really interesting in the idea or in the fact that like most of the concentration so the, the province only has about a million people that live in it. Um, again, Canada is a very small country. Like it's not a very, it's not a very big. The most populous province is is Ontario, and I think it only has like fourteen million people. So, uh, which there are like cities that have more than that. But anyways, um, I digress. So, um, Nova Scotia has about a a million people who live in the province, but half of those people, like five hundred thousand ish of those people, all live in like the Halifax uh, regional municipality. You know, this is just like a quite a, it's a decently large area around Halifax, but um, half of the entire population and and, it's, and there's lots more migration coming here. There's just it's a really popular place to be. So really within the last like 10 years, the unhoused issue in this in the city has just skyrocketed because um, people have just been completely priced out of places. And this is a great example of a city where the people who are unhoused are are not unhoused because, you know, not necessarily unhoused because of, of any sort of, like, substance abuse issues or stuff like that. It has to do with the fact that they literally can't afford anywhere to live because it's so freaking expensive here because of the fact that there's just no no infrastructure, you know? There's no... The, that doesn't exist for an, enough people, and then there's nowhere for these people to go, so they have to sleep outside. It's it's pretty wild, man. It's the... the and, and, it, and it is true. It's like... like these freaking politicians man like the, the it doesn't really seem to be setting in that they like to really blanket every like if you're homeless like it's your fault or like that you ended up there it's like it's your fault for being homeless like kicking you when you're down like bro not everyone who's homeless is is a uh, is a you know an addict and, and and even if they are like there are still reasons as to why people end up that way that have to do with our system too so it's like there's really no way you can kind of cut the cut the cookie on this one and and not end up with a you know a small slice so to, so to speak like it, it's there's a lot of responsibility that needs to be shared but it's it, the government it tends to just think it's like it's it's that if you didn't don't have it good in life it's because you fucked up you know and it's just ah, it's such bullshit um next one comes from Tanner Wooden super high stress events People, even me at times, will say that they will do something or how they will react to a super high stress event. I work in a career where you can be sitting at a table and chatting with coworkers, and the next second you have the largest adrenaline dumps in your life. Lots of people will say that they react a certain way, but most people will freeze. And if they haven't been through events like that often, I still to this day make that same mistake more than often than I'd like to admit. Um, I'm just going to even, I'll probably end it on this note uh, by telling you guys this story, but this is, I would probably be like, I would suck in a crisis situation because when, when I had a house fire, like whatever that was, like probably two years ago now, geez, um, coming up on two years, uh, probably around this January. Yeah. Guys, I fucking panicked. Okay. I was like blabbering on the phone to the cops. Like, 
I, w- I was incoherent. I was freaking the fuck out. Okay, my house was on fire. Like, it was just like, you just don't know how you're going to react to those situations until you're, de- you're dealing with them. Now, I look back and think to myself, I definitely overreacted on that one. I was freaking out, but I was also home alone. It was COVID. Also, January in Saskatchewan, it was like minus 35 degrees. It was freaking freezing cold. But, um, and I was only in a pair of shorts. But anyways, um, when I was a kid, I... <laughs> I went to this haunted house. I was just recently telling somebody this story. This was a high stress event for me as a kid, okay, everybody? This was traumatizing. I went to this haunted house and I don't even know. I just we we all got led into this one area is fine. I was like, "Ah, well, this place is gimmicky, blah 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 blah." And we went into this one area of the house and we all went into this really really dark room and then the door slammed shut behind us. And then it, and then in one second like just a, a light shone on this in the one corner of the room. And there was this dude like sitting in an electric chair and then like, like he started getting electrocuted and like there was like lights everywhere and it was flashing. And this fucking terrified me as a kid. I had PTSD from this as a child. I'm telling you, like I thought the shit shit was real, dude. Like I was so freaking scared. And I was a kid. I was like eight or nine probably. And I was so freaking scared. I couldn't sleep for weeks because of that. And um, I bolted. I was gone, bro. My my sister and my mom were both like freeze. They were like, ah, you know, oh, scary. Ah, I was fucking gone, dude. I was speedy Gonzalez. Like I was out of there. All right. There was no like andale, andale, andale. Like I was freaking banging on the door to get out. I was like, let me out, let me out, let me out. But uh, I don't, yeah, I think, I think I think I'd perform more like more well in precarious situations than I actually will or actually do. But see, this is the thing is like, I'm starting to think like I was, I'm debating the idea now of taking like some sort of survival class or something because I'm like thinking like, who knows, man, you just never know when the shit's about to go down. Like you just don't know. Like, I'm not even saying like the world. I'm just saying like maybe in an area that you're at, you just don't know when shit's about to like go down. Like even when we live out in Halifax here, there's uh, hurricanes and shit. Like you just don't know. You know, it's good to just know some basic for survival skills. And like, if some shit happens, you, the, your first reaction isn't to panic, you know, it's to figure it out. Anyways, thank you all so much for tuning into this ep- uh, episode of the Red Ask Us podcast. I love each and every single one of you. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, please leave us a rating and also please leave us a review. Uh, remember, you can comment on this week's episode by uh, going to the description of the episode in Spotify. And clicking the description, and right below it, you should see a white icon that says reply. And I will read out the reply in the next week's following episode, and you will be notified when your response is published. Again, I love each and every single one of you. Happy Thanksgiving, and uh, I will see y'all next week. Peace out. Love you. Bye.